is the Besotic Pride of West London podcast. The final whistle's just gone at the G-Tech and it's finished. Brentford 2, AFC Bournemouth 0. You could say that tonight was all about the result. And what did you make of the game, Ad? Uh, Dave, I'm, I'm going to say it was all about the result. And uh, we got that result. Three points against what can only be described as quite a bad Bournemouth time side. But I thought Brentford played well all round the pitch. Great, uh, not a normal starting lineup, but I thought everyone played well. Everyone adapted their positions. Josh De Silva definitely had his best game back, I thought, um, this season and well, whenever since he's been back. Uh, Tony. It was, so, it, was, it was like yin and yang, wasn't it? So, like, Tony was back in the starting lineup. Rico Henry was out. We didn't really know how we were going to set up. You know, we, we always fear that, you know, our performance might dip against a team that, you know, they're fighting for their survival. But not really, did we? We weren't under threat, no, really, no, at all. As far as I can remember, uh, Raya made one save in the second half. And it was, a, it was a good save. It was a good shot on target from them. But other than that, we totally dominated the possession. Where we were on the pitch was was really good. The substitutions that we made, when Roslev came on, he was great. Little cameos at the end from Zanka, brilliant. KLP did what he had to do, chase things down. Damsgaard really played well when he came on. He didn't have to do a lot, but what he did, he, he did very well. So the standard three points, come on you beast. Not, not a classic. It was, this wasn't Brentford at their best, but really it was about we had to go out there and do a job, and, and we did that job. We kept it tight at the back. We negated Bournemouth, who, you know, they didn't really threaten much, to be honest with you. But we, we, we took our chances, and, and really it was just all about the three points. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. As you say, I've seen much better performances from us. However, we played well in the first half, played well enough in the second half. I thought De Silva played particularly well today. I thought Tony was great. I thought Yano was great out of position at left back, but I didn't really see him put a foot wrong. I thought we played excellently and ultimately got three points. That's all that matters, isn't it? Come on, you be. You heard! So we, we were quite unsure of like the starting like, set up. Rico was out the lineup, and then but Tony was back. We had a lot of um, attacking potency in that team you know we didn't we weren't really threatened were we today was it was the result ever in doubt no mate it, it, was, it wasn't a classic it's a massive three points as always isn't it you know it wasn't in doubt they never troubled us I don't think Ryan made a save we're just bringing we're bringing 20 million quid people off the bench you know Lewis Paulson at Damsgaard but we're a really good team you know, we're solid that's, that's a big three points that's the sort of game we never used to win you know, you won a couple of big games, you lose. You We're not slipping back. We're just moving forward. You know? that, that, so, so, you know, we, we said it in the podcast before the game, you know, the, th the, the, the fear is always that you're up for the Liverpools, you're up for your Chelsea's, your Arsenal's, your Tottenham's, but you, your levels dip because it's a Bournemouth. We didn't, we didn't see them dip. They weren't up there with the intensity of the games, but we, we just did what we had to do. I, I thought it was a perfect, you know, I, I don't think it was a game to be like against Liverpool stuff. We played against Bournemouth, we did what we needed to do to beat Bournemouth. I think they got it absolutely right, tactics. I think it's, it's, it's just so we could easily have just like dipped away because it wasn't a big team or a big name and stuff. Um, with no disrespect to Bournemouth at all. But they, they weren't very good, to be fair. I'll give them that disrespect, but they weren't very good. We're, 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 exactly what we needed to do. We're, we're, we're going to hear a brilliant rendition of Free From Desire. Um, we're, we're free from relegation fears. That's what I'm going to be singing. You know, this, this Brentford team tonight, we, we, we went out there and we did a proper job tonight. It was more functional than we've seen. What, what did you think when, the, when you saw the start in 11 compared to how we, we actually executed the game? Always worried when Rico's not playing. But uh, we went uh, flat back forward to start with, which is fine. Uh, I mean, they, they play with their front two, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, I thought they try, they came to frustrate us, uh, which they did for a bit. They uh, they came to time waste, which they did for a minute, two and a half. 
and uh, you know, we just uh, we were just more professional than them. They tried to drag us down to their level, but we were just too good. There were some nice performances on the pitch. Again, another good game from um, Josh De Silva, which is always good to see. But overall, we were better than them, and it showed in the end. You, you, we can't ever get bored of this bouncing around at the end. It's free from desire. And I said to Sav just then, we're free from relegation fears, you know. We haven't got to worry about that for the rest of the season. Now it's about pushing on, see what we can achieve. What we saw today, we didn't, we, our, our levels didn't dip. Were you impressed with what you saw? Yeah, I thought it was a, it was a comfortable win, really, in the end. You always felt we had an additional gear. Bournemouth came to try and hold us out. Whilst we'd scored, they didn't really have many ideas. They want, want, Ray made one good save. Uh, you know, at the end of the game, we were bringing on 21-year-olds, 22-year-olds. This club's got a very, very good future. And it's, a, it's beautiful to watch it at the moment. Anyway, about to go and bounce around. Bounce up, bounce down. Brentford tonight. We just did what we had to do. We're going to have a little bit of a bounce. And then we're going to go back to the pub. We'll finish the podcast off there. But tonight, very proud of Brentford. If I was a Bournemouth fan, I'd be really worried. They, they vacated. Brentford bringing on talent off the bench. Sade comes on. KLP comes on. We've got, we've got attacking flair in every position. Ayer's back. Tony's back. It is a very exciting season for us. Um, and we, we finish in the top half of the table and everyone's going to be buzzing. Let's get back to the pub. Let's have a right good beer. So we're back in the boozer. It's, um, it's yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a decent atmosphere. You know what I mean? It was like, it kind of reflects the game, I think. You know, when you saw the team tonight... Without, without Rico, um, but Tony back. What did you think how we were going to set up and how did you think we executed the game? I think there's always a risk. Rico's so good, uh, especially getting the ball out to the flanks. Uh, you know, he gives us that width. But, you know, it, a professional performance, had a potential to be a bit of a banana skin, uh, but very professional, very, you know, a good, good, solid three points. That's all you can ask for, you know. Bournemouth weren't great. Um, they kind of handed us to on the plate a little bit. But, yeah, no, good performance and, you know, good, good, good depth of squad, I think. You know, there's a lot of players there that maybe weren't, aren't kind of straight on the team sheet, but they put a, a, a good performance in. And, yeah, you know, Josh De Silva, I think, had a really good game. The second goal, you know, he set up, basically... Um, so yeah, really good, solid performance. Two really clinical finishes was probably the difference with, between the two teams. You know, looking at the looking at the stats after the game, you know, 50-50 possession. The passes are similar. I didn't think they ever really threatened us, but we had we had the clinical finishing. Obviously, Tony with a penalty, and then Matty Jensen curling it into that top corner. Did you see what um, the beef was between Tony and the goalie after that? What was that about? Did you see? I, I didn't see that. You'd have to speak. I'm, I'm in the north stand, so I, you'd have to talk to people yeah, in the west stand. There was, there was the, the, the Ivan Tony like picked the ball out of the net after Jensen had put the ball in the in the in the goal for the second. Then like all the Brentford team were like celebrating, and the and the the Sky camera was kind of taking part in that up close and personal. Uh, all the time, the, um, it seemed that Ivan was shithousing the goalkeeper, kind of teasing him with the ball. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but um, I think it may have gone back to the penalty. I think I think Ivan might have been given a bit of a uh, bit of a G up before the penalty we went in. Yeah, possibly. I mean, I think you know we, we need sometimes. I think in the past we've we've been accused of being too having a bit of a soft underbelly and not winding teams up. But you know, I think. Tony wound them up and it worked. You know, they, they as you said before, they, they were poor. They didn't really have anything up front. And, you know, we had a lot of threat on the wick. We had threat through the middle. And, you know, we were far the better team. And that's not with, you know, Brentford, you know, roasting the glasses or anything like that. We were just far, far better with them. And, you know, we wanted it more. We were, we were fighting for the ball. Um, you know, we were quick. We were getting out to the wings nice and quick. 
you know, we were driving the ball forward and, and, and it worked. And when you, have a, when you have a poor team like Bournemouth, you're going to cause damage. And we did that. Fact is, tonight we're sitting eighth in the Premier League. We are, we are the eighth best team in the country. Um, we're above Chelsea. We're above Liverpool. Fact, this isn't an opinion. It's just counting. We are eighth in the division. That is exceptional for this stage of the season, is it not? Yeah, of course it's exceptional. Who would ever think that Brentford will be eighth in the, pre in the Premier League table? Above the, as you said, above the lights of Chelsea and Liverpool. We have 29 points. And Leicester. <laughs> and, uh, and Leicester as well. And we the thing is, we thoroughly deserve it as well. We thoroughly deserve it. The, the table doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. Um, you know, we, we said it at the very start of the podcast... Tonight, for me and for everyone there and the team and Thomas Frank, it was probably all about the result. Um, performance always is important. You know, we want, we want, a, we we had a, um, we have a, we have a wealth of attacking talent there. You know, you, you bring in Damsgaard on, you bring in KLP on, you bring in Sharder on, you bring in some really, really good, progressive players. But they need to deliver. And are, are you are you happy with what you saw tonight? So in answer to your question, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with what I saw. Um, I, I thought we, 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 were, we were the better team. Um, to give uh, Bournemouth their dues, I thought they were actually pretty good in the first half. Their press worked well, but I thought we were disruptive. This was, a, I think you mentioned earlier, this was a different Brentford formation and tactics. And we didn't do our usual free-flowing uh, football, but we stopped, we contained Bournemouth. Uh, we disrupted their play, and we did have we did have opportunities to attack, and we took those. I thought Josh De Silva particularly was good. Brian was good. Wister was good. And it's really good to see the lights of Wister and Jensen getting back. And again, I'm going to use that word disruption because they were they were getting their footing for tackles and breaking up Bournemouth's play. I thought we were really good. Um, and just going back to my point, we fully deserved the victory and to sit eighth in the league. And what, what's the potential? You know, we're, we're sat here. We're not getting. None of us are going to get carried away. You know, we, we had a we had a banana skin. It's a, it's a term that's been used a couple of times already on the pod. Um, we had a banana skin tonight, but we had to get past. And if, if, if we if we can beat, you know, if we if we're going to beat Liverpool's and we're going to beat Man City's, we have to be beating Bournemouth's. Um, and we went out and we did that. What, what where 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 are you putting our potential for this season now? I'm going to be a politician and not answer that. Um, I'm, I'm an opti optimist by, by nature, but having followed Brentford for three decades, I sort of learned to be a realist rather than an optimist. So what is our potential? I mean, we, we punch way above our resources. We way, punch way above our weight. Um, how far can we go? I, I don't really want to say. I don't want to jinx it. Um, I, give, I, give, me, give me a range. Where, 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 where are you thinking? Between, between where and where? Well, well, I was singing, we're going on a European tour, and Pun said earlier, you know, we go to Shaka or whatever. I'm thinking Napoli. Following on from what I just said, you know, tonight was about all about the, the result. Um, we've we've beaten we've beaten Liverpool, we've beaten Man City, we've beaten Man United, we've beaten Bournemouth. Now, Bournemouth isn't something to get excited about. But normally, these kind of games are ones that we kind of struggle against. But we didn't. What is the potential? Are you, wh where, where's your head at following that? Eighth in the league we are now. I, I, I come into the game thinking we, this is like classic slip-up coming on because we're very unpredictable. Right? We beat the teams we shouldn't beat and we don't beat the teams that we think we should beat. And listen, it wasn't a great performance, was it? But we all saw the team sheet and no Rico. Again, I don't know why that's not a, that's not a thing. Why we sold we sold him to Bournemouth. Sold him to Bournemouth, okay. And a swap deal with Chris Meppham, I hope. Yes. Yeah, he, uh, he didn't play, and, and that we watched that on before the game. Sky Sports had the lineup on, and I know we're trying to make it, get ahead around it. Sky Sports team sheet as Ivan Tony as left back, right? It's quite funny, but yeah, it's very very weird. I think the team looked disjointed first half. Bournemouth had about eight players down constantly. It had, had nil nil all over I thought that game apparently the penalty is a bit weak I haven't seen it back that changed the game but listen it's a great win because you, you follow up the uh, Liverpool games the, the run we've been on 
this is now the bread and butter games coming up. The, the run of games coming up on, on paper, as your cliche says, we can't pick up points against. So Bournemouth was the first, leads away next. So mate, all can be is really happy. Like it's a, it's a routine win in the Premier League, which is a fucking luxury. We never thought we'd have years ago, right? So buzzing. You know, there, there are cliches. You know, you can only beat what's put in front of you. First goal is all important. But of those two, the first goal was all important tonight. If that, if they get it, then you fear the worst. And if we get it, then it's like a matter of maybe how many we can get. The um, the second goal. Um, we, we, we looked at that and the, 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 most of the team are off celebrating. Ivan Tony seems to be having a bit of a fracas with their goalie. Did you see any of that? Uh, I, well, I obviously saw the second goal. I thought it was great play by the silver. Broke down the left, he won the tackle. But as, as the game went on, the ref, as is normal for this league this, this year, like weak fouls in previous years that have been given, then not this year. And there's a bit of a tete a tete show inside the halfway line just the silver could have gone down didn't stays up wins the ball first on the left well, it's a great goal a bit weak from the keeper to be fair I think again the keeper will look back on that a bit like last week us against West Ham will think should have saved it but um yeah mate the, the, the Tony stuff didn't really see to be honest I'm, I'm to, 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 Tony Tony adds so much though doesn't he you know I know he scored the penalty and he won the penalty but, you know, w- without him, we are a little bit diluted. But there's only three things certain in this life, right? There's death, there's taxes, and Ivan Tony scores penalties. So we had a first, first visit to the, to the new stadium tonight. Uh, a woman that's been regularly to Griffin Park for donkey's years. What did you make of the stadium? What did you make of the new Brentford experience? I was really impressed with the atmosphere. I was expecting something cold just because I'd never been there before. But actually, it had captured somehow the spirit of Griffin Park. And it was all of a sudden there, like, welcoming me back home. That's how I felt. It was really lovely. So, you know, it, it wasn't the, the most raucous tonight because, you know, it's about, it's about what's placed in front of you. You know, it, it was Bournemouth and that's not knocking Bournemouth. You know, it wasn't Liverpool. Um, and it wasn't Chelsea and it wasn't Tottenham and it wasn't a lot of teams but you know we had to go out there and we had to win so the atmosphere I didn't think was at its best but but still it's important to know that you've 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 experienced Griffin Park you've come to the new place and you don't you don't feel it's a different club no I really don't and I I like remember those really cold Tuesday nights where we were losing every other week it was awful and this like I don't I don't feel any of that negativity it's just it was super fun for me and I really enjoyed it. I mean, I was surrounded by people you know, singing songs um, in a great new atmosphere and, you know, it's a, it's a great view. And Brentford are eighth in the Premier League. We are the eighth best team in the country. Are you, are you buzzing from that? I'm buzzing and it, it's just an unreal notion to think that. Like, it's cool. Really cool. So I'm, I'm going to wrap it up now. You know, it's been a it's been a functional night. I think on the on the pitch, um, the the Brentford team have delivered exactly what they had to. Um, they were up against a team that was desperate not to lose tonight, but the you know the penalty was a was a a, a, ter- a real turning point, and Matty Jensen's brilliant finish second half was 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 excellent, and no no wonder the team celebrated like they did. You know, we talked tonight about. How, how big a banana skin Bournemouth could have proved. We, we've talked tonight about you can only beat what's in front of you. We've talked about we're going on a European tour. We've talked about we are sitting eighth in the league above Liverpool and Chelsea. We've talked about how far this team could actually go. Where are you, where, 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 where are you saying? Where's your head saying? Where, what can we achieve this year? I, I think the European tour is, is definitely on. I mean, we're eighth at the moment. We're above Liverpool and Chelsea. Uh, downside is Fulham are uh, having a pretty good season as well, so uh, that's a little bit of a blow. But yeah, but we, we can let them do that, you know. You know but we, you know, you know, it's like just just like whatever with them, you know. If, if we can, if they if they can finish fourth and we finish sixth, we're happy with that, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, t- twenty nine points, <laughs> twenty nine points in mid January is incredible. We we were saying, I think we're about ten games better off than we were last season. It took us till about mid March to get to this point. Hey. So really now, we're almost effectively safe. 
we were saying now we can go to places like Leeds next week tough game tough atmosphere but almost play with a little bit of pressure and I think that's when we're on our best I mean today we were saying yeah functional maybe a little bit underwhelming not the best game but these games happen every season Bournemouth I think came to frustrate we were saying I think their game plan was keep it nil-nil as long as possible sneak, sneak a win 78 minute late goal but getting that goal just for half time I, I don't think it was really ever in doubt you know, we, we, you talk about, like, um, when, when you get wins against Man City, then you get wins against Liverpool, you get, you get free hits. And, you know, your free hits were the ones against West Ham, and we won that. And then we've won again tonight. It, what, 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 how do we approach the Leeds game? I think uh, we approach it with confidence. Seven games unbeaten, one three in a row. I think Thomas Frank says that we don't celebrate too much when it happens, but we don't look too far into the future as well. I think we go there with a manager who's under pressure, and if we score early, I fully expect them to turn on them, and it gives us a good chance to pick up another win. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be Debbie Downer and say, you know, we're due a defeat. We we will lose before the end of the season. You know, it may well be against Leeds. They owe us one. They'll be desperate, desperate to reverse the 5-2 five, five game at our place. You know, they, they've got a lot of ammunition, but they're weak at the back. We have to be ruthless up front. We have to make the most of Ivan Tony being in this team at the moment. Oh, yeah, 100%. I think um, the interesting thing for me against West Ham was actually we saw against Liverpool what we were without Tony was actually the lack of Embuemo. Embuemo's finishing might not be the best, but he runs t- defenders ragged. He tires them out, and I don't think he's such a key part in our, how we play because pace is the thing that destroys teams. So, yeah, we've got 100% a good chance of beating Leeds next week. And we've, we've got, like, Sade, and um, we've got... You know, KLP to bring into this team as well. You know, what, what we saw today was a team full of attacking potential. You know, not all of them are at their pinnacle yet, but what we've got is enough to worry any other team in this division. 100%, and I think uh, it's well known teams don't like coming to Brentford because of the atmosphere, but I think. Um, you just have to look at what a lot of pundits say that teams don't like playing Brentford because we make it hard for them. We get in their face, we play with pace, and we play on the front foot. And positive uh, football is always going to win you more points than negative, and that's what something we do very well. Very well indeed. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this one up here because you know there's a lot, to, there's a lot to be talked about tonight from a game that really wasn't it wasn't exceptional this isn't a classic this ain't a game that we're going to talk about in 10 years time but it is, it is a turning point in so much as that it was a game that that we we, we could have kind of let our, our excitement dip and to, to let Bournemouth take anything out of this game would have been an injustice you know we we had a we had a bit of a blow where we we missed one of our exceptional players Rico Henry what a season he's having you know um, he, he, could, he, he, he's, he will grace any team in this division and any team in this division is Brentford he's with us we are sat there 8th in the Premier League and we are there on merit we, we're there because we've beaten the best we've beaten the worst we are consistent we're Brentford FC and we're very proud of ourselves tonight so all that's left to say, really, is at the end of another West London night, is come on, you bees. Come on, you bees. Let's beat European Champions Leeds next week. <laughs>